to better than a run a minute. Bowling at the moment not particularly challenging. Lots of slow bowling options for Zimbabwe. Changing his line, going around the wicket. Nice to see, nice buddy. Good to see. You working out, TC? Changing angle for Tendai Chisoro. Good, Good strike, tonight. positive stroke. Nice, TC. Nice. Just short of the boundary rope. Yeah, TC. Said change in angle and it just goes right into the arc. Looped up, opens the shoulders and hits it uh, through uh, the deep mid wicket region. Doesn't bring the man catching on the boundary into play. Zimbabwe need to tighten up here. The runs have been flowing, 21 runs are added already from the overnight position. Very, very slow yesterday. And there seems a much more positive intent from the West Indies this morning. Too short. Saving the boundary, but they'll come back for two. They're all over the place this morning. And that run rate is from when we started 1.59 is just teetering below two. And uh, Craig Irvin in danger. Good piece of fielding by Christopher Mpofu in the deep, but a bit messy, you would say. I would have preferred a lot more dot balls, I think, the Zimbabweans. Good, you could mention the Argentine footballer. Not for the first time, edging between the keeper and slip. Finds the edge. Does it bring the slip into play? There we go. I think it does. I think Hamilton Masakadza is a bit too deep and a bit too wide. Because of the angle he's going to create, and if he finds the outside edge, it'll go a lot finer than the ball actually turning away from him so the slip will go squarer. Nice, JC. Good, buddy. Go J, go J. One or three for one. Everything going the way of the visitors so far on this third morning. Runs flowing, edges going past the close infield. Look at the huge d difference from what we've seen so far over the first two days. The first interrupted by rain and bad light. Full day yesterday. Lovely setting the Queen's Sports Club here in Bulawayo. Let's go, coffee. Nice Turn fresh on. breeze blowing across the ground, east to west. Stretching out the flags. Boy, Soto. Really a pleasant setting. Warming up into the morning, into the afternoon, we anticipate. Nice, nice job. Yeah, there's a lot of anticipation, especially around Graham Creamer, because of how well. Davindra Bushu bowls. You just sort of got to analyze the two and see where they are exactly in terms of speeds and, and also lengths and lines. It's well fielded. And so Graham Cremer would have looked at how, if he had an opportunity, had a discussion with the analyst on how Bishu bowled, what are his lengths, what are his speeds. Check 
going, coffee? Because in the interview, there was discussion of subtle changes that make a huge difference. And this is Bishu in this game. Really good accumulation of balls and variations. Some below 80 kilometers. Seventy-five percent of his balls, which is really good, and those subtle changes of coming a lot closer to that off stump as well. And there's also a comparison on perhaps he was bowling a lot shorter. Doesn't show that there. Nice, nice, Joe. Let's have a look at Graham Creamer. Good Joey, good Joe. Like that, Joe. Nice coffee. This is Creamer. He doesn't have the luxury of having a lot of right-handers, so you expect of them a lot down the leg side or outside the line of off stump. And there's one that misbehaves. End of the over, 105 for one. Twenty-two percent, a lot fuller. You expect that is a high percentage from where Bushu was, and sixty percent, sixty-seven percent for in that good area. And just the one ball, 95 plus. Bishu, a lot slower, a lot straighter. But again, it's the luxury of having a lot of right-handers. Giving you an abundance of analysis on this uh, third morning with the variations and the lengths and lines of the two wrist spinners, one right arm, Devendra Bishu, one left arm, Graham Krema. Nice, nice. Good to see. But there was Craig Braithwaite yesterday who showed a great deal of variety and actually changed the game for the West Indies in a, in a certain period. And there, 90, 85, 80 to 85 and 80. Massive variation. Yeah, nothing there. And brought about the wicket of Malcolm Waller without scoring. That would have not contributed to the total at all. So maybe Raza can then look at this as well in terms of variations in a scale from that 95 all the way down to maybe a 75. And also a good area. Caught on the crease. Feet planted in front of uh, the stumps. Karen Paul looks very vulnerable. Sometimes indecisive as to whether he should go forward or back. Well, if Craig Brathwaite isn't watching now, someone in the dressing room tell him to watch his. His bowling has been analysed. I'm sure he'll enjoy that. Did you see the way he celebrated that wicket? I don't think he's ever celebrated any of his hundreds that way. 109 for one. It's always interesting when you get these situations, part-time bowlers getting more involved, getting wickets, night watchmen, getting a few runs, spending some time in the middle. Good recovery for Zimbabwe from 14 for 3 to 326. Courtesy of Masakadza, Raza, PJ Moore. West Indies off to a solid start. Flamboyant in the background. Didn't see too many of those up at Victoria Falls. 
see the jacaranda quite profusely. We going coffee? Looking for that expansive drive will need to be mindful of the stop delivery spinning into him. That's why there's a short mid wicket. On the sweep. Nice job. Cafe. We've spoken about the bowlers and what a an opportunity it is to pick up wickets but you also definitely need a glove man that is going to be have to be on top of his game and uh, register cover has been guilty of dropping crucial catches and this isn't a catch but you need to show the intent of wanting to catch that because at one point there will be an opportunity So it's so crucial, especially on a wicket that is offering a lot for the spinners to have a man that's going to be able to hang on to some. Yes, this hasn't come off the edge, but at some point, you've got to hold on to that. I think it's a confidence thing for both the keeper and the rest of his team as well. If you've got a glove man who's basically holding on to everything as a matter of course, it just adds to the confidence of the team. Certainly Shane Dorwich will know all about that because he had a horrid tour of England and has certainly improved here. 112 for one. Something will happen for us, boys. Sort of like in any sport where you've got either a goalkeeper or a wicketkeeper, anyone who's considered a custodian, the last line of defence. If you've got someone who you're feeling really confident about, that he's going to take everything that comes his way, the ordinary ones, the difficult ones, it makes a huge difference to the attitude of the team and the bowlers. mentioned Shane Dorich he's way down at number eight in the order and if he comes good and he can come good it's a really strong West Indies batting lineup if you've got Jason Holder way down at number nine because Bishu is up as a night watchman it is a batting lineup that will give Zimbabwe a lot of headaches on day three if they don't start picking up early wickets Yeah, there'll be moments that will need to be taken by either side. And I think West Indies at this point have decided that uh, this is a moment where Zimbabwe aren't quite on top of their game. Perhaps came straight off the pad. Bit of a smile from Powell. Perhaps thinks he's missed out there. Yes, straight off the pad. Pitching outside leg. So difficult to be a close infielder, especially on the leg side. When you see a batsman with a big back lift looking to play the attacking shot, to just retain your composure, keep your eyes on the ball, looking for the inside edge of the pad. And at the same time, being mindful of not getting hurt. That ball, 98 kilometers, a lot quicker. Trying to catch Powell on the crease as he's decided now to stay perhaps on the back foot. Subtle variations and, and also changes in pace will bring Tendai into place. And those bat pads that you're talking about, the men around the bat. Ambitious and rewarding 
for Devendra Bishu. Saw the mid-off in, decided to go over the top. You know, when you're bowling well and you're picking up wickets and you've got your 100th test wicket and you put up the order as a night watchman and you've had an opportunity to bat, you get one in the slot. And he gets it straight out the middle of the bat. This will annoy Graham Creamer because they would want to see the back of the, the night watchman. Perception is that he can't bat, but my goodness, he's showing he can. He's such a confident young man. He might just be asking, what did uh, Jason Gillespie get again as night watchman? A double hundred? A double hundred. Is that all? <laughs> just, just a little double hundred. Proved to be his last test innings. Jason Gillespie committed the ultimate sin, scoring a double hundred as night watchman. 118 for one. But the only wicket so far, and certainly the tempo, as referred to by Ed Rinsford, has changed on this third morning with the West Indies looking to score at every opportunity. And the bowling hasn't been all that disciplined. Zimbabwe almost seem to be in a bit of a quandary here. There's a discussion taking place. A man that could bowl, not saying at this stage, is Brendan Taylor. He has some very useful offspin. Could he come into the effect as if Craig Brathwaite did? He's bowled a few times in ODI cricket. And Hamilton Masakaza next to him as well. He's also got uh, an ability to be a partnership breaker. There you go, nine wickets, offspin. Arun, who? I'll ask Arun in a little while. Who were those batsmen? And at 45, that's not bad compared to some of the averages of the other bowlers use. But I don't think that's a good sign that you have a virtual committee meeting within half an hour's play on the field. Nice, Joe. Nice, Joe. Lovely, buddy. Fazir. It's a little discussion, a little board meeting, nothing wrong with that. Maybe just talking about how much sunscreen did you put on this morning? Or what do we do now? I think it was needed. I think five runs and over in the first uh, seven and a bit overs is uh, a bit much and sort of just letting the, hand, uh, the game slip away from you in the first hour. Answer to your question, Ed. His wickets include Ian Bell, Karen Pollard. Get him on. At some stage, I think it's a good option with the way Brathwaite went about his bowling. Little left field selection for Graham Creamer. Nine wickets uh, for Brendan Taylor. ODI career. Wonder if those wickets though would have been really bowlers getting the wickets or drowning in honey sort of situation where the batsman is caught between hitting it for six or four. Yeah. Through the gate, I think. Massive rip and turn. You should write fiction in your spare time. Don't have a lot of spare time. Nice coffee. Very good, Joe. Watching that back foot slide in there, boys. Another one for Reggie here. Yeah, Joe. You going, Joe? Nice job, nice job. 42 runs added in 32 minutes. Good start for the West Indies. 120 for one.
it's looking rather easy should I say for Karen Paul and uh, Beshu Sikanda Raza he's had a fair share with in the overs and um, six maidens and ten runs This could be interesting. Um, the wicket seems to be, again, what well, is relatively not new to Powell, the way the ball is spinning. And he's, he's been playing pretty well, more so, m mainly off the back foot. And it's been working well for him. Morning, Bish. Morning, Bussy. I don't know if this move will work, but I think it's a move that's well worth trying. You've got two left-handed batsmen at the crease. You want possibly to have one bowler turning it away and one bowler turning it in. Yeah, it's been fairly easy for um, the two left-handers batting. They've been scoring freely. They haven't looked like they, they're in trouble at all. And it's... You sense that it for the Zimbabwe, they feel like it's a waiting game for them. It doesn't look like there is a set plan and trying to, to pick up wickets. Just going through motions and hoping something that something will happen, waiting for the batters to make the mistake, not to try and come up with, with a plan. And It's that weakness that we've been talking about, that everybody's talking about um, in their bowling department, should I say, having lost um, Carl Jarvis and Sean Williams as well. A difference there, I think there is a plan. I, I just think it hasn't been executed very well. And the West Indies or the Windies batsmen have put a lot more pressure on Zimbabwe's bowlers today. This morning, already 18 singles, 19 now, and three fours. 43 runs have come in 11 and a half overs, whereas it scored 76 in 49 overs yesterday. I like the, the positivity. I like the rotation of strike that I'm seeing. There's more energy in the batting. It's risk-free, but it's more energy. I do agree, but what I would like to see from the Zimbabwe bowlers, or rather is to have a set plan it, try and hold it don't let, get them to score keep the score boutique and be boring the old saying playing boring cricket hold up the runs have a set plan maybe perhaps ball up ball on the one side of the wicket but they have been scoring both sides of the wicket to me there isn't a set plan Can, can we assume there was a plan to get wickets this morning because they're starting the day and they didn't execute that plan well and and maybe plan C or D would then be to dry yes. runs up. But I don't blame them for trying to get wickets a little bit this morning. To start with, 123 for one. Nice weather conditions, we'll see. Um, even though the sun is out, it's still cool enough. Yeah, the last uh, couple of days, it's been grumpy and the skies have opened up. Blue skies. It's a beautiful day today. What's good about it is the sun is going to be baking on that wicket and it's going to get even drier, more abrasive throughout the day which should actually assist the spinners a lot more. Mid-off set deep, mid-on set deep, deep mid-wicket. And because of that, it's a single and I would, I would use that mid-off differently, even to Powell, who's the man set and the more aggressive. I'd have, I'd probably think about the mid on back, but not mid-off. Make him hit it past mid-off against the spin, unless it's a googly. That 
that's exactly what we're talking about, uh, what I've been trying to say. Bishu, what have you done? What have you done? Oh, Brendan Taylor, what have you done? Like a bit, I like a bit. Was the sun in his eye? But goodness me, with sunglasses on. Goodness me, Brendan Taylor. That's rather disappointing, but Bishu going for big heave. Disappointed with himself, but this in particular, Brendan Taylor, not very good at all. And all in vain, all the effort from Graham Creamer in vain. But that, that is a crime at this point in time. What a shot and the drop catch. You cannot afford to relax. He, he already admonished himself last innings for throwing it away nearing 50. And I'm, I'm looking at the reverse cup of Brendan Taylor as well in trying to catch the ball. Because he was off balance and falling back, it made the re reverse cup here very difficult because it hits the heel of the hands rather than going in the orthodox manner. Well done by Mpufu and 50 partnership comes up, a good partnership. Yeah, this is when you look back again. Coffee. Yes, he was off balance. Coffee. Going reverse cup or should he, should he have gone normal way? I reckon he should have gone the normal way. Yeah, disappointing from Brendan. You have to love batting as an, a lower order batsman with the talent that Bishu has. Fazir Mohammed was talking about Brathwaite's celebration at the wicket. The reason that he celebrates the wicket more than he does hundreds is because he expects to get hundreds. It's his job. Bowling is an added bonus. And people that operate that way always celebrate the secondary skill more because it pleases them no end because it's not expected. 128 for one. Very good partnership here. Good contribution from Bishu, supporting very well. Sitting on 52, 85 balls. Certainly showing some the grit that we talking about uh, Bishu he loves batting you did mention that he is he's got the talent with the bat not only with the ball in hand and he's, he's proven that but it's that loss of concentration or wanting to bat for long you'd want to see him kick on isn't it every time Vusi every time from the beginning of his test career every time or, or I'd say 80% of the times he's been dismissed is because of over ambition He has played some stodgy, important lower order innings and night watchman innings for the West Indies and deserves great commendation, but he's, he needs to stop the overambition. It normally happens when you start to think, right, it's time for me to cash in on the runs here, as opposed to you have the same tempo, the same thinking that you've had when you walk into bat. Yeah, I was sitting at the back of the commentary box for that first half an hour. I was thinking, why doesn't Raza start the bowling with two left-handers at the crease? Just force the batsman to think about different angles and different angles of spin. Maiden over. 
128 for one. As a night watchman, this is how what he's actually done. I'm not looking at the scores in particular, but the minutes that he spent out there batting do suggest that he can actually stick around. And the longest he stayed out there, 97 minutes against Pakistan. This is last year and this year against Pakistan again for 71 minutes. So it's the time that he gets to spend out there, which is the key for West Indies as a lower order batsman as well, which does tell you that he can actually bat. Not looking at the scores in particular, but it's the time that you, you get to spend out there. Absolutely spot on, Lucy, spot on. It's always been about the partnerships that he's built, the time he spent in the middle. Don't look at his scores. He's played some important little knocks. Nice shot. You see, that's low-risk cricket. As a lower-order batsman myself, who failed unnervingly throughout my test career, I know it's over-ambition. Almost 17. That's, those are not bad numbers for a guy who's not even anywhere near talked about as an all-rounder. And with relaxation, and that's where power is important, to keep him from getting relaxed. It's also an opportunity to showcase your, your skills, your talents, and what you can actually do with the bat. Good job, good job. And just try and push yourself up the order if, if there is an opportunity. <laughs> or maybe you're being over ambitious. Or he's, he has pushed himself up the order right now. He's batting number three. But then again, you look at it in a. This is how the bowlers or the guys that bat low low down the order think, start to think and don't get to spend time on the crease. <laughs> Can I tell you a story? No, I, I won't I won't tell any stories this early today. Now I'll save them for later. No more stories. Did you try and push yourself up the order? I said no more stories. Okay, I'll tell the story quickly. There we go. Critley right. Ambrose always talks with much pain about the fact that he previously, from before me coming into the team, did an outstanding job as night watchman. Nice and then I came into yeah, the team, my first test match, and because I looked like a batsman yeah, playing coffee, straight to some, that's all it was. I, I played straight. Yeah, you look like a batsman. Yeah, I, there was no okay. substance to it. It was all aesthetics. First test match in Ghana against India. First ball gone. Kapil Dev, LBW, Bishop North, 130 for one. And then Kirtley looked at the management and he looked at me. Yeah. I was doing the job effectively before and this youngster comes in and all, you just give it to him, it's good for you. Stay with the tried and trusted and proven. So he always ribs me about it. In swinging Yorker, stood on the ball, gone. I like it when you say you look like a batsman. You look like a batsman. Let's not forget that. I opened the batting at school. School. And then what happened? It all went downhill from there. No, I, I, <laughs> I started focusing a lot on my bowling. I underachieved hugely with the bat at international level. I'm sorry. At least you try to give yourself a chance, should I say. <laughs> Arun, our analyst, is passing a computer to Vusi Sibanda, and he's not showing me what he's telling Vusi, so he's coming with something very good. I'm going to deal with Arun at lunch. He, you may never see or hear from Arun again after lunch, so. You do have a 50, though. Trinidad against Sri Lanka. 
Open the batting. Got 53. Those are not bad st stats, should I say. For somebody that thought he was a batsman in junior school <laughs> and then tried to transform himself um, to a proper batsman, but no, looked at himself as a batsman or looked like a batsman. But then hang on, you got a you got a half century under your belt. Davindra Bishu needs to <laughs> needs to at some point really get to that landmark. He's good enough. Keep trying, Vusi. Catch! Gone. Raza, the man. Should have been in to the attack from the very start. And he's the man that gets the breakthrough. Bishu is gone. That looks rather soft from Devin Bishu. Yeah, just going hard at it. Sikana Raza making very, very easy for himself. Good ball in the end. And a good wicket for Zimbabwe as well. But Devin Bishu has supported really well. And uh, he's on his way out for 23. And Wesson is up 131 for two. Another important knock for or opportunity for Kyle Hope has not cemented his place yet. He got to 40 in the first test match right here. I wonder, and again, I, I don't know how easy a pitch this is to start on for a new batsman. Yeah, this will tell you the story. This is how he, this is why he's here. It's not an easy wicket, as you said. It's assisting the spinners and it's also very easy for the off spinners as you saying it's an abrasive surface and it's an important or rather a good opportunity for Kyle Hope to try and stamp his authority and showcase why is he is here. Crouched leg stands, bent knees of Kyle Hope. Should have put that away. Should have put that away, yes, I do agree. But then again, also, it's the pressure that he's in. Good shout. I think they're thinking about it. They're looking excited. Talking about it. He's going for it. Right. Talking about the pressure that um, Kyle Hope is in. Yes, you, you would say you should have put, in, put away the first one, but this is the story. No problem with the delivery. But that, pitched outside. Did he get a bat on that is the question again. But then hang on, and hit him outside. It looked like it missed the front pad and hit him on the back leg, but did it hit him outside the line is the question again. Yeah, it look, might have hit the back leg. Remember, the decision, original decision, was not out. So there's no bat. So even if it's slightly, if it's umpire's call, it remains with the original decision. Definitely hits the back leg, misses the bat. Or does it? There's a little murmur. It looks like, it looks like it's the bat hitting the ground. Correct. So I do not think that he's got a he's got anything on the bat on that one. 
So the question is, did he hit the back leg outside the line? So this will tell us the story. No bat involved, but it struck him. The impact is outside, so it will be umpire's call. And uh, there's a confirmation, Simon Fry, good decision. 131 for two. Yeah, good decision from the umpire, Fusi. When I saw it real time, I thought, hit outside the off stump. But I thought it might have glanced off the front pad. And I can understand why they went for the review, because it actually hit the back leg. But once he's playing a shot and is struck outside the line, even though the ball is going on to hit the stumps, it should not be given out. So correctly done by the umpire and technology. Yeah, absolutely right, Bish. And you can also, I, I, I feel for Graham Creamer because you went away and you went to register cover. Didn't, didn't talk about it much because he was very confident that there was an opportunity and also thinking that, okay, this is one of the top order betters. Let's go for it. So you can understand that at the same time that they're taking the, the chance of, it might go their way. But then again, if it doesn't go your way, you look back and you think, hmm, should, I have, should we have taken it or not? I'm not going to be too hard on that one, that review. If you've just joined our broadcast, I think it's such an important day of Test Match Cricket. I call it moving day. It's an opportunity for Zimbabwe with the West Indies trailing still by 195 and the ball turning. If their spinners can make inroads, you add two wickets to the score. It's a different complexion. West Indies need, I think, to be batting still at the end of the day's play. That's a theory. Yeah, you're quite right, Bish. If by end of play today, West Indies are not batting, they will be in deep trouble. So Zimbabwe will be looking at that and they will be thinking of that in the back of their minds. The wicket is getting worse. It is deteriorating. So they will be thinking they need to make use of the, the conditions presented at them today in particular. And this, again, if having a look at this, does suggest that it, it's not getting any better. So they need to also, West Indies, they need to pile up their runs today at the same time. So... One thirty one for two. And it's again. Go, Joseph. Damn, boys. Pair them up here, boys. I love this ground. I have to tell you, I love the, the trees that surround. That surround the, the right side of the ground as we sit here in the commentary box. Just to the right of your screen, you can see the overhanging trees. Yeah, it is a beautiful ground, I must say. And very refreshing when you're sitting out there. It's these, they're forever green, actually, throughout the year. I, I don't recall seeing these trees dry. They're always green, which is a beautiful sight here at Queen's Sports Club. But on the other side, you do get to see dry trees. <laughs> the jacaranda trees. It's the nature that we always appreciate around here, yeah, mainly in Africa. 
You saw the boys that went down to Victoria Falls. Yourself, you were there. It's always a beautiful sight, isn't it? Uh, just the nature, the trees are, that are around you, that you always get to appreciate the nature and be quite fortunate that we see it every day out here. Heavily set leg side feel for the ball turning in with a short leg, short mid wicket, orthodox mid, mid wicket, deep mid wicket. Man at a, a short backward square. No point. Should have gotten a run or two for that as well. Midon has been pushed back at, with the batsman on naught. I know they guard the release shot. I'd have Midon up. Make him go for the top. Off the mark now, Kyle Hope. That was a quick delivery. This is... I spoke, I've spoken about this earlier. Sikandar Razak. Yes, he's got, a, he's got a heavy leg side field, but I just feel it makes it a lot easier for the batters to score on the leg side if you're bowling too straight. Yes, it's fine. You've got protection on the leg side, but still, s slow it down. Kyle Hopp, he, he is under pressure. He's searching for runs. He needs to perform. He knows that. Don't make it easy for him. I'll tell you quickly about that 50. Here we go. Oh, we get one more. We'll come back to it. 132 for two. <laughs> the Windies have had a steady start. Brathwaite and Powell, good partnership, 76. But Bishop was a key one from yesterday. Right. We've seen some good partnerships. From yesterday, Bishop supported Powell very well. And moving forward as well, you had a decent partnership. You're going to tell me a story. Now we're playing Sri Lanka at Guacara Park and... I think I, I must have made some runs. I can't remember if that's a year. I, I'm not sure how many runs I'd had in first class cricket that year. Maybe had a score too. And Brian Lara said to me, mate, we need someone to pinch hit at the top of the innings in this game to go after them. I don't know how many deliveries it took me getting. He likes to get forward. Nice, Joey. Nice, Joe. Kyle Hope likes to, to use his feet to the spinners and generally nice, showed it good competence in that 43 in the first test nice, Joe. it's always good to use your feet as well and oh, no, 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 if you ever look at Kyle Hopp, I do understand and I feel for him as well because he you, you get the feeling that he needs to score a lot so that's why he's always searching for the balls using his feet he wants to take on the bowlers but it, it can work for him it may not work for him at the same time but it's about spending time out there and waiting for the bowlers to make the mis mistakes and pounce on it <laughs> right, talking about pinch hitting go on listening yeah, I scored 50 and I was coming out shoulders in the air. I thought, oh, I've made use of this opportunity. And I got into the dressing room and Brian Lara looked at me. He said, mate, I sent you the pinch hit. What was that? I just felt deflated. I thought I'd done so well. 50 against Sri Lanka. Skipper berated me. Rightly so as well. I was a touch slow. I have no record of how many balls it took. I let the team down. But we won the game, didn't we? He's a hard man, Brian. Very good ball to finish the over that. <laughs> 132 for two.
I said just do one first up with the morning mail. One feels it's going to be a, a day of attrition here for Zimbabwe's bowlers. Karen Powell has held firm, he's 73. Just the one wicket today, that of the night watchman. And the play resumed. Windies were 78 for one. Good looking shot for no run. And uh, the wicket went down at 131. Bishu making 23, but he did his job as a night watchman. He stayed for 52 deliveries. It's a chance. It was a quick chance. But that would have been one spectacular catch had uh, Hamilton Mazakadze pouched it. Yes. Let me ask Tino Maweo, would, would that have been a chance in your book? It went quickly and was low, but uh, it would have been a really good catch. It's gone to his left. And, uh, yeah, he was standing up, wasn't he? Would have wanted to be a little bit lower than that, but sharp chance it would have been. So this was the chance a couple of deliveries ago. <coughs> Just keep an eye here on uh, Hamilton Mazakad's at first slip. You'll just keep your eye on the first slip. Notice he comes up there. He's just going up. Had he stayed down, Raza might have well have had a wicket there, but he was just on his way up, so his movement was already in that direction. But it would have been one heck of a catch had he managed to pouch it. It would have had possibly been one-handed. But uh, I'm talking next to a slip specialist here, Tino Moeo. 100 catches at slip in first-class cricket at slip. No, no, not at slip. <laughs> oh, look, it was a good story. I was building up to a great line then. <laughs> you can carry on with your story. <laughs> oh, dear. I have to get a new script writer. No run there. Three from the over. It's 135 for two. So the Windy's trailing here by 191. It's a lovely day. It's a little bit of a crisp breeze around the ground, but it's a lovely day for cricket. And that's where we stand on day three in this first session of play. Zimbabwe, 326. They recovered from 14 for three on day one, which was a truncated day. And then Windy's in reply, 135 for two. Karen Powell looking uh, or bidding for a fourth test century. Brathwaite went for 32 last night and Bishu is gone this morning. Bishu caught and bowled Raza for 23 from 52. So he had a couple of drop chances. That was the one that Kramer any time on another day would have caught. That was a steaming chance. Catch it. Yeah. That was the caught and bowled. Catch it. Yeah. There. That one there. Well, that's a simple chance. I think he's bowled pretty well in this test, actually, Tino. Sikandar Raza. He certainly improved the more he's bowled in test matches. I mean, he didn't even bowl when he started playing in the national team in the one-day setup. He didn't even bowl there. And uh, they started using him as a part-timer. But he's certainly grown in confidence over the years. And the more they've used him in, in one-day cricket, more as an all-rounder or a batsman who can bowl. And the same in test cricket. 
He's uh, grown a lot and matured and taken some very important wickets for Zimbabwe. That's an absolute beauty. It's deceived Kyron Powell. Was there an edge? Was there? Not so sure here, but it's beaten them all ends up. It's really fizzed, hasn't it? It's gone through quickly. It's missed the outside edge considerably, but... Good turn. Kicked away. It's an absolute spitting cobra for Regis Jakabba to try and take in the ball. Spinning off a, a good length. He really does get some uh, revs on the ball, Graham Creamer. Fluid action that he has. Now then, now then, don't think so. Only the keeper's gone up here. I agree with you, Alan. I don't think so either. It looks like, and you can hear Hamilton Masakadza over the stump mic saying, I don't think there was bat. And I don't either. 69 gone, 135 for two. Plenty of fizz in this over from Krima. Now then, what did this do? Was there an inside edge? He didn't look that convinced, Mazakadza. It was a good over from uh, Krima to Kyron Powell. Would have sown a few seeds of doubt. Was there an edge? I don't think there was. I think that was got to go back. Got to roll back just a little bit here. That's the tall spike onto the pad. I think ultra edge shows there was no edge there. But close, close enough. Ball is just gone. Yes, it is. Umpire's finger goes up. That ball kept a little low. And Raza's perseverance pays off. It's uh, a failure for Carl Hope. They're thinking about going up for the review. But uh, I think it'll be wasted if they do. As you said, it's kept low, and if anything, it's hit him slightly outside the off stump, but I don't think so. They've gone up for it. Clearly, uh, Kyron Powell would have uh, thought that that's hit him outside the line of the off stump. But uh, personally, it looked like he's gone more back than across, and I think that struck him in line. No problem with that front foot. Look how it's all behind the front line, so perfectly legal delivery. Ball did keep low. He's gone right back. He hasn't hit it, and that looks to me pretty plump. That looks absolutely dead to me. Middle, middle, and off stump. And if it is, that's a, not a convincing review. But considering the travails of Kyle Hope, that might be a reason that he went upstairs for the review. He's desperate for runs. He's gone a long way back, and that ball did keep a bit low. It's hit him on the back leg on the roll. There we go. As we thought, hitting him in line and cannoning into the middle stump. So uh, that's a review lost by uh, the Windies. And uh, Simon Fry will stay with his decision, his original decision of out. So Zimbabwe, the third wicket for them, 135 for three. Kyle Hope goes for one.
The Windies have lost their third wicket to this morning. Bishu went caught and bowled Raza, and now Carl Hope trapped LBW. No doubt about the decision as it went to DRS review and uh, the ball crashing into middle stump. It brings Shea Hope in, playing his 15th test match, 350s, two centuries, those against England. in the same test match at Headingley. So Shea Hope replaces brother Kyle, and it's Raza again who struck. Beautiful off-spinning delivery turn, and not bouncing as he expected it to, and uh, sliding on slightly, wrapping him right in front of the off-stump, and the joy for Sikandar Raza. He's been good at the ball. He's taken important wickets for Zimbabwe in all three innings of the series so far. Yes, there's been stages where uh, he's got tired and he's given them a few runs. But for somebody who doesn't bowl this often for Zimbabwe, especially in this format, Sekanda Raza has been fantastic. Well, I, I, the way you've described that there, Tino, you know, is a little bit like Moyen Ali for England. Almost uh, England were kind of reluctant to bowl him. But now he's really has become England's number one spinner. And he, he, it, it started with a, an Indian tour to England in 2014, and he was the top wicket taker. Two for 18 and 18 overs for Raza. Confident shot to uh, start an in innings. Shea Hope, who made 90 not out in the first innings of the first test, held the Windies together. How important, you know, in a situation like this, men around the bat, is it to get a single to get off the mark? It's very important, especially if the ball is fizzing like this. With a situation where the ball's not spinning so much. Like that, you can afford to stay there for a little bit longer. But when the ball's going around like this, you don't want to be facing too many deliveries, especially if you're still new at the crease. Now, I just want to pick up on something that we had a discussion about yesterday. Off the mark now. We did talk about uh, the men on the boundary, long on to the new men yesterday. And to me, I think it's just too easy for, even though he's new, to hit the ball over because that's the only option that he's got. But if there's a man back there, he then can't afford to do that. And you've got a guy who's catching straight. And he also can't just punch the ball straight down the ground. I think that's what uh, Powell was trying to do yesterday when he was dropped by Creamer. Hit that ball down there for a single to get off strike. So I think it's a very good position that it's attacking and it's not easy for the batsman to get off strike. Chisora, the fielder, end of the over. A wicket for Raza, 136 for three. Also, 
The Windy's now 190 runs behind. Another wicket here. And uh, Zimbabwe will feel that they can really take advantage and make capital of that 326 they scored. Good test match developing here. Really is on a knife edge. Zimbabwe with uh, a spin heavy attack. They've only got Chris Mpofu as the recognized seam bowler in the attack, but it's been all spin. Do you know, I'm a big admirer of Shea Hope. His footwork to me, it looks so good to the eye. It's, there's a, an aesthetic quality to it. I love the way he moves around the crease, gets himself into good positions. I saw a little bit of him in England. The two hundreds that you spoke about at Headingley. A very compact player. And uh, he's matured immensely over the last year or so. Shot on top of the ball. He should get two here. You got coffee? A lovely shot again, just getting his weight over the top of the ball here. Got himself in a good position. And I just waited for the ball to come to him. Making himself the mainstay of the Windy's top to middle order. Pretty sure the the rest of the team in the change room will be very comfortable when he's at the crease. Beautiful. Getting right back into the crease. Oh, he's bowled the googly and Shea Hope read it well, tucking it around the corner. in 2017 his average is 55 with two centuries and three fifties it's good over bowled by Kramer 138 for three the bowlers used by Zimbabwe Sekunder Raza, he's been the standout bowler so far in the innings. 19 overs, just the 19 runs from it. Seven maidens and two wickets, well supported by Tendai Chisora on debut and the captain, Graham Creamer, who got the other wicket. Yes, good figures from Chisoro in his debut test, the left arm spinner. Sekunder Raza, 19 overs, two for 19. He will continue from the airport end of the ground. Powell on strike. He's at lots of balls straight to the man at backward point and he'll feel he's missing out. I think I've seen probably five or six in the last three overs. He's got to try and make sure he gets that ball through the through the offside ring opportunities to score and to put the pressure back on Zimbabwe we talked about how well Raza has bowled but when he gives you that opportunity to score you need to make sure you do that oh that's a mistake Solomon Mira came in to attack the ball the first thing is you've got to gather it and uh, he probably had one eye on the stumps for the throw Took off straight away. And yeah, uh, you can see he lifted the eyes, didn't keep his eyes on the ball, and that's why he missed it. He's got it through this time, through that gap, and he's been promising to do that, threatening to do it, and this time he does. 
much better stroke. He's made sure he's forced that in front of point into the gap and got the boundary this time. But if he had done that early on in the over as well, that's nine runs to the over and uh, pressure on the bowler. He certainly looked today, Alan, like he wants to get on with it. His demeanor today has been very different to how he approached his innings last night. End of the over, six from it, 144 for three. Kyron Powell, 82 not out. Gone this morning. Devendra Bishu for 23. And Carl Hope with one. And the Windies find themselves 182 runs behind. But uh, conditions look, even though the ball is turning, the ball is still turning, it's Kyron Powell is illustrating how you can accumulate on this pitch. In another long discussion there between uh, the seniors. Raza had a chat with Graham Creamer. Creamer will continue with his leg spin. Wendy's resuming 78 for one. 49 overs the Wendy's used to accumulate those 78 runs. It was pedestrian. But they certainly have found another gear today. Even though the run rate is still just fractionally below two and over. Overall, 1.99. Overrate is good from the Zimbabwe point of view at 16. Frantic calls of weight. It looked like Powell was interested in the single, but you don't want to be taking chances to Raza. Too short this time from the Zimbabwe captain. Oh, Raza's quick. Another boundary saved. I must say that the effort from Zimbabwe, the collective effort in the field, is uh, admirable. Again, not too short, but uh, got himself in a good position and uh, had a little bit more width outside the off stump to maneuver that ball into the offside field. Coffee. Two from the over, 146 for three. Eighty two from one hundred and ninety five. Karen Powell, he's looked a lot more positive this morning. No runs for Kyle Hope again. Shea Hope looking good so far. Still to come, Roston Chase, Jermaine Blackwood, and Shane Darich. 
be a recognized batsman. Jason Holder can certainly bat. Test century on his CV, Kimo Roach and Shannon Gabriel. So the Windies, 180 behind on the first innings here. And Sikandar Raza will continue. It's 21st over now, two for 25 in 20. He's played that very, very late. He likes to play back to the spinners. Several times, including to uh, the leg spinner, Graham Creamer, he goes back and almost seems to get that bat coming down a little bit late. Oh, that's an absolutely... Oh, my, well, you could say it's perfect. That's what you strive to do to beat the defensive forward push. Now, this gets the batsman thinking. The delivery before that, he's gone back to the ball, slid on and not turned. This time brings him forward, turn and bounce. It's not easy. That one he's looked to turn onto the onside and a leading edge. He'll get the single as the man is back on the boundary there. Uh, again, good bowling from Raza. Well, Sekunda Raza will bowl many more less threatening deliveries than that. And he'll pick up wickets. Might even pick up a wicket in his career with long hops. But that was such a good delivery not to get a wicket. Hence the look of uh, sheer frustration when he went down on his haunches. with every delivery here, Raza. This is his eighth over in this spell for Sakanda Raza. Inside edge. 147 for three. Match developing nicely here. West Indies starting brightly after a very slow, deliberate effort towards the end of D2. 78 runs of 49 overs for the one wicket. Two wickets this morning, including the night watchman. out there carefully just looking to cover the delivery mindful of the forward short leg but actually be thinking of having a, a leg gully almost nice joe nice joe but they're settling down now into their work they will a bit loose early on a few loose deliveries long hops wide half volleys Couple of wickets have made a difference. Nice coffee, good Maru. Favorite shot for any left-hander. Good coffee. 
and coffee. Made Nova, 147 for three. <laughs> the most current power of that early laps yesterday dropped on 11. Certainly Masakadza took advantage of his opportunity. Should have been out, but for a no ball from Shannon Gabriel, went on 15 on day one. Benefited by another 132 runs. As your point about the way they've settled into their work, I think it's the introduction of Raza after about half an hour's bowling this morning that has really initiated a period where the West Indies have only scored at one and a half per over, 16 runs from 11 overs. Prior to that, they were scoring at 3.61 per over. Raza has done an outstanding job and given confidence to the others by picking up wickets. You add two wickets or another wicket to this score here, and this is why I, I think it's a huge day for Zimbabwe cricket. The West Indies will have to be at their very best today to see out this day's play and get close to this 3-2-6. Do not like that long on. I understand for a guy who's in and set and going, but for a new batsman, it cannot be standard practice giving that single away. Especially to someone who is not necessarily a big boundary hitter. Well, I'm actually looking to you to help me out with that philosophy because you would have followed a lot more of contemporary international cricket. Asking the question, was there pad first? That's the issue. Yeah. That's what you think of the line. It is pad. They're asking about the line. They're asking themselves a few questions. Ten Time going by. Ten seconds are up. Time going by. They're going to review it. So enough of a discussion to make them feel there was pad first before bat. And again, it's Raza. And the key is, where is he struck? Well, I suppose two keys. Was it pad first? But if it was pad first and they seem fairly confident it's a legal delivery, was he struck inside the line or on-off stump? Inside. Terrible. Terrible review. Come on, Chakabva. Surely you must be able to see that. I think it's just brushed the pad. Brushed. But the line, look at it. And he's right there with helmet on. Obviously going through the protocols now, the big spike because it's come on to the bat. Question as to whether or not it clipped the pad. But look at the point of impact. One and a half stumps away. And that, that's why you, you wonder about the role of your wicket keeper because he's got such a vital role. He's got to be able to offer the advice. It's got to be about whether or not he's been able to feel comfortable that this is worth a review. It doesn't matter whether he's experienced or he's not, or whether he's played one test or 150. He's probably best in line to advise the bowler, the captain, anyone else as to whether it's a worthwhile review. No more reviews. Is his voice powerful enough? Is his voice more powerful than Raza, who was adamant?
But this is where I make the point, Bish. Whether it's his debut test or his 150th, you should be, as a wicketkeeper, confident enough to say, look, I know Sikanda is on about it and he's confident and whatever, but the way I'm standing, that's missing off stump. That's all I can say. Maybe he said that, and that's why I'm asking if his voice is powerful yet. Maybe he said no, but Raza was adamant. So is Raza's voice more prominent and powerful in the ear of Graham Creamer than Chakapfa? Well, if that's the case, Raza should be opening the batting and opening the bowling. Chemistry of teams, mate. Chemistry of teams. Don't start me on that. We're hearing about chemistry of teams as to why the squad was unchanged from the England tour. That's the West Indies. One forty nine for three. So no reviews left for Zimbabwe. And those are crucial in the context of the modern game. The, your reviews, how you use your reviews. You now have the benefit of not losing if it's the umpire's call with the upgrading of the rules and the regulations. Of course, I was just playing devil's advocate because on the review, the first thing I said is look at where Shakapva is. And Mpufu put his hand on his shoulder as if to say, don't worry about it. Masakatsu is having a word with him as we stand now. Shakapva looks crestfallen. But we will never know what was said. I do know that Raza looked like the man who was saying, yes, Skipper, we got to have this. Ian Bishop playing devil's advocate. I'm shocked. Right, well, we also saw the issue of the reviews in <laughs> Kyle Hope reviewing his LBW appeal, which looked as adjacent as adjacent could be. And, and again, that's where you talk about the chemistry. There also has to be an honesty attached to that. And I think that's where we, we talk about it that, you know, you're, you're maybe a top line batsman, a top order batsman, your wicket is valued, and you walk up to the non striker. And even if the non striker is a good mate of his or whatever, you've got to say, look, man, that's, that's dead on, on your way. Sorry about that. As tough as it is. Because the bigger issue is the team, and you don't want to lose a review. Yeah, look, at, look at it real time, and the reaction as well. Now, it is dead. And I think we in the commentary box, we felt the same as the umpire. The questions, though, for, for players. You could see Kyle Hope asking Kyron Powell, is it outside the off stump? Remember, Hope is desperate for runs. He doesn't actually, isn't that 100% sure as to where he is when he's struck. He thinks he's outside off stump. Powell is on the other side, on the on side. So what is his view like compared to the umpire? Sweetness, sweetness personified from Shea Hope. Shot of a man in form, opening the left leg, almost perpendicular bat. Just, just such nice clean lines about Shea Hope's batting. Keep going, Joe. Hey, keep going, Joe. 154 for three. Talking about players under pressure, not just Kyle Hope, Shane Dowrich, Jermaine Blackwood, 
may not necessarily lose their places, but they need to get some runs for the team's sake and their own confidence. Yeah, fans, and you're absolutely right. There must be honesty, and I'd hope there is. The only thing I'd say for difficulty for players is you standing there thinking about your game at the non-strikers in, and all of a sudden, from the onside, you're asked, is it outside off stump? Is it... The counter to that is, you say, don't go for it, bro. Don't go for it, you're gone. And you get back to the pavilion and struck him outside off stump. How do you look hope in the eye? It's a lot of pressure on players with this review thing because he's not standing at the strikers and non-strikers and directly behind the umpire or in front. He's to be onside. Yeah, look at where Powell is on the return crease. So what is his perspective as to where the batsman is struck here? There'll be an element of doubt, even if he might think it's out. So I really... <laughs> Back in the days when we played, you'd be standing at the non-strikers and in your own world. Now you have to think, Jesus, I have to stay on the ball to be an umpire as well. Yeah, you're going to have deliveries like that going past the outside edge that's that's what he's he's getting he's getting bounced he's getting turned but he shouldn't get frustrated because sooner or later it's going to get the edge it's about just persisting and as for that situation about being at the non-strikers unfortunately i didn't have to worry about that too much being one before the roller you just merely survived a couple of deliveries and then it was the next innings Just about persistence. 154 for three. You are watching at home and you think this is a comfortable position. I'm telling you, it's not easy for a new batsman to come in on this. Raza has been brilliant. Raza has been excellent with ball in hand. This is going to be the city. Theoretically, the West Indies have to bat last, theoretically, unless this is a huge innings. lengthy discussions in between overs not that it's going to affect the overeat in any way because they've got an excellent overeat with these slow bowlers operating taking a look here at how he shapes up with his stance to the slow bowlers to raza he's more on middle and leg to crema almost outside leg stump showing all three stumps batting to crema That is interesting, and there can be a number of theories for that. Apart from the googly, he's he could probably say, I'm giving Kramer room so I can play the ball with most of his spin through the offside to Raza, covering the off stump. So that maybe one theory I can get outside the line of the off stump, be hit out there, or just be able to play the ball with the spin. There could be other theories as well. That's just one. Maybe we can ask him sometime later on. Yeah. You got coffee? What it also shows, whatever his answer might be to that question, is that he's a thinking cricketer. It's about the angles that are offered by the bowlers. What is their line? How is they? How are they turning? How does the stock delivery operate? What are my best options? How do I eliminate chances of getting out? Another catch put down. He was on 11, now he's 85. 
This was sharp, but straight at him. The one on 11, the first one was a dolly. This one is hit firmer, too quickly onto Kramer. But still, it is a good enough opportunity. Having covered themselves in glory in the field, Brendan Taylor just coming to have a word with his captain, probably saying, well, don't worry, I did worse than you earlier on. Just couldn't get the hands together quickly enough, came at him. Masakaza might be saying, what did I do wrong? To be targeted by the captain. Better be careful. Because the rules have changed. You can get sent off now, can you? Send the main bowler and the skipper off it gets, if it gets too feisty. Forget about Hamilton. It flew past Powell's head. Might have injured okay. the hand because he's going away towards backwards square leg. And now it's Brendan Taylor at slip. Oh, go PT. Watch the googly carefully. We'll come back for a third. And he'll keep strike. 158 for three. It's just sheer frustration from Crema because he's the one that dropped the catch. His frustration should not be with the batsman. I think, I'd like to think he's just letting off steam from his own disappointment. Second new ball being brought onto the field going to become due after the next over. Jeremiah Matibiri, our fourth official. Really operate as a team. They have to operate as a team. And these days, the officials with all that is required of them, television umpire, reviews, Every little bit of this and that, so many alterations to the rules that have just come into force. We've got to be mindful of the, all of these upgrades. And that reaction by the Zimbabwe captain, even out of frustration, has cost him half Hamilton Masakadza on the field. Well, Faz, I was watching Malcolm Waller at the end of the over, and Malcolm Waller was saying to Dharmasima, he, if he was a slip, he'd have been like this, and when he threw it, he'd have just looked like that. It would have gone for four runs. That's what Malcolm Waller was saying to Dharmasima. He wasn't going to put his hand nowhere near that to stop it. Nice, Raz. Nice, Raz. It's funny. Dharmasima almost fell over. Very good, Raz. Very good, Raz. He is well a deep backward square. He's not at slip, he's in the safety of the shade. Oh. You mischievous commentators. So now that's going to be relayed from the Zimbabwe dressing room because you've just said it as to what Waller said he would have done. Just let it go away for four overthrows. Trying all the variations, playing again from within the crease. I saw it as an arm ball from the time it left his hand. There was something different about the grip and the release.
couple more at least. Once more, he looked for three to finish off the over. They decide against it. Good work. 160 for three. New ball available for Zimbabwe if they want it. Not necessarily to have to bowl in Pufo, although it's an option. But we saw Sean Williams bowl the new ball with Jarvis in the last game. Now, is this a surprise? Given the effectiveness of Sikanda Raza, Brendan Taylor dis in discussion, former captain in discussion with the present captain, it is going to be taken. Obviously, Chris Mpofu, the lone frontline seamer in the Zimbabwe attack, will have first use of it. I don't have a problem with this at all. And I'll explain why I said I saw it happen in the first test. I was saying during the break where Jarvis took it. I think Mpufu might have bowled one over or two overs. And, and then Williams bowled the new ball with telling effect. So it could be Mpufu and a spinner. Spinners have bowled the new ball in T20 cricket for, for many a year. No problems at all. It'll bounce more. It'll grip. So same problems, just quicker for the batsman. And to reinforce your point, when the West Indies were pushing for victory on the fourth evening, they took the second new ball and Bishu continued to bowl and got a wicket. And they were able to finish off the match soon after. So that idea has probably gone with black and white television. The idea that only the faster bowlers can use a second new ball or any new ball. In fact, I thought the West Indies should have taken it yesterday when it became due and even allowed Bishu to continue bowling with it, or a spinner. They waited until after lunch. Yes, Bishu and Brathwaite got a wicket. They took it after 100 overs, the West Indies. Now, for Mpufu, all he has to do is get one wicket. If he gets one wicket in the innings, that's all. He probably need to be happy with a contribution. Let's look at his seam position as he bowls. on ground you were in Zimbabwe a few years ago helping uh, these uh, young fast bowlers uh, disappointed that maybe a few more of them haven't come through the system to be real factors at, at the senior team level big time big time Chris was one of those uh, I mentioned Anthony Ireland in who went to play for Gloucester during the first test, we talked about them. Tanashi Panyangara, who's had back problems. As, as well as Chris and Elton Chigambora. Ed Rainsford, who's sitting next door, I thought with his outswinger, he would have been a real factor for many years in test. My beautiful action, lovely outswinger. Injury as well. Lots of those guys, including Panyangara, Chigambura, have had back problems. I think Mpofu as well. I, I envy them. I, I, well, I don't envy them. I pity because they're super talented as teenagers. Nice two deliveries first up from Mpofu. Bit of hesitation before they take off. Well, I think Ed's latest challenge really was trying to keep pace with you yesterday, heading back to the hotel from what we understand was really struggling but told himself he won't be beaten by the old man no he made up his we heard it on the bus i mean if we're telling tears out of school let's get on with it he said you know i have to really i have to really confess something to you i was on my last legs and my last gasp but i looked up and i saw old rocky seven 
you know, moving along, ta da da. And I said, no, 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 I can't let the good people of Bulawayo see me collapse at the feet of Ian Bishop. The stories you hear. Well, he's 18 years my junior, so it told in the end. Young legs. It's fascinating because I was trying to keep up with him and he only this morning said he was trying to keep up with me. So we were both trying to outdo each other. Whereas this bloke, Ryle Stewart, he just raced ahead and he was back in the hotel having a cup of tea by the time we got there. A super specimen of an athlete. Still, still bothered by his stories of how he used to open the batting in Barbados and trunks every fast bowler that came his way. Stuff of fiction. I would believe that as much as I would believe there's flying fish and cuckoo were waiting for him for dinner at the hotel. A national dish of Barbados, the land of the flying fish, where Ryle is from. Indeed, from so many in the, the, this West Indies squad are from the island of Barbados. Nine of the 15 Abajans. Not this man on camera. He's from the island of Nevis, the Twin Island Federation of St. Kitts Nevis. Never had a Kittishan play for the West Indies at senior level, test cricket. Good judgment by the batsman, 161 for three. It's got to line these deliveries up on off stump. There's a little bit of in-swing here, nice little low fives from the rest of his teammates a little bit of swing he's got the cutter as well if he lines up this delivery particularly to the left-hander he can cause some problems brighter and sunnier with every passing day after the first day on Sunday. Tendai Chisoro. Bowling his left arm spin. Not uh, how he would have started as a, a fast medium bowler. Got a few past the outside edge yesterday. Yeah, good idea. In theory, good idea. He can hold his finger spin quickly let's see if the ball will grip it will bounce as well we saw Sean Williams do it with telling effect in the first test all the players encouraging TC Tendai Chisoro which reminds me of another TC the beloved Tony Cozier Passed away last year. Again, that turn and bounce with that new ball. It'll take a while to get over the absence of uh, the voice uh, and certainly the, the man who covered West Indies cricket so extensively for so long. But he would be encouraged to see how this West Indies team is growing and developing. But as Ian Bishop said, they are facing a tough challenge now from this battling Zimbabwe team. Well, what puts me on ease, and, and I miss Tony as, as much as you did and as much as many people did, what puts me at ease is that his son, yes, Craig Kozia, who's been in India for some time, keeps messaging me many times every day. Stop talking rubbish, Bishop. But he'll be pleased with Shea Hope, who passed through the club of the Kosias, the Wanderers Cricket Club, even though he didn't stay there, she, he passed through the coaching system and then moved on. Yeah, it is a famous club of the many famous clubs in Barbados, the Wanderers, Pickwick based at Kensington Oval, Craig Brathwit, Jason Holder coming out of Wanderers. Wait, 
Yeah, just getting some encouragement here. Tendai Chisoro skidding those deliveries through. Two minds, Che Hope. 163 for three. The Windies, 163 runs behind, and Powell, even though he's given a couple of chances, some of them more difficult than others, finds himself 10 short of what would be a fourth test century. Now Chris Mpofu, it's 13th over. Hard work for the sole seam merchant in this team that Graham Creamer captains, Chris Mpofu. Oh, man. Tough work. All the slower bowlers uh, will have some sort of assistance, and Chris Mpofu, there's his figures. He's doing a job. He's uh, not being scored off, and uh, perhaps he can try and find some reverse swing. Pretty good carry through to Regis Chakabva. Wasn't an express delivery at 128, but good carry from Mpofu. You've got to use him sparingly, the fast bowlers, Chris Mpofu. And it's a surface that isn't quite lively enough or spicy enough for Christopher Mpofu and the Seamers, even though that Gabriel and Roach got wickets. It's coming around the wicket this time. What a wonderful piece of bowling that is, and the catch. Mpofu, you celebrate. Boom. What a catch by Craig Irvin. We just spoke about him being the only sole Seamer in the side, and he gets something to happen. Hits the deck. Extra bit of bounce, cramps him up. It goes quickly, and what a catch. They've been very difficult in the field to hold on to. They finally hold on to one, and it's all smiles. Superbly engineered by Chris and Porfu. He came round the wicket, the short delivery that induced the false stroke and a very legal delivery, nothing wrong with that. And uh, Kyron Powell goes for 90 on 230 deliveries, the Windies 163 for four.
Roston Chase with that century on his CV against India last year in Jamaica has a test average of 40. 95 in the second innings in the first test. And uh, a wicket that would have done so much to galvanize the hopes of the Zimbabwe side. Tremendous catch by Craig Irvin. And Pofu celebrates. That's his first wicket in this series. Yeah, that's a wicket that can change the tempo, change the confidence, change everything for Zimbabwe because it went so quickly and held on very well at Gully by uh, Craig Irvin. Look at this. The movement to the right was really good. Oh, he's become excited now. He's flowing on a sea of adrenaline here. Oh, yeah. Me and Bisher all smiles. Fast bowlers getting a little bit of bounce, a little bit of carry. Oh, test the keeper's reflexes. Give him a good stretch. Boom. Well, he's pumped up. Roston Chase is batting well outside his crease, but well, you can't blame him, Boffer. We might see a little bit of fire here now. It's 20 minutes before lunch. Work up a nice appetite. It's gone short again. That was at 132. That last delivery, but I liked Ed, I liked the intent, I liked the strategizing from Mumpofu, came round the wicket, and he bowled the short ball to induce the mistake. Yeah, also, credit to the captain, bringing him on just before lunch, there's 20 minutes to go, he would have been fairly fresh into his 13th over, had an opportunity to rest, and this is his first real spell. Here's his speeds at the bottom of your screen, 135. And also, good captaincy for Graham Creamer to take the new ball just before lunch, to get something happening. What an inspired over that was. One run and the wicket of Powell. 164 for four. Graham Creamer taking the new ball and uh, getting a much-needed wicket of uh, Powell on 90. Dropped a few times, but not on that occasion. And so now we enter that middle order for the Windies. So Karen Powell's long vigil at the crease comes to an end. He gave a few chances. But also, that I think that just a little message as well that Zimbabwe will feel right. They've denied Powell the century that he was looking odds on to uh, achieve. And that again, that you, somebody scores a century against you and you've given him two or three chances. The skippers drop most of them. But that makes it a much better dressing room for the lunch break, knowing that you've removed the man who's been the dropping anchor there for the most part. That means that the fairly two new men at the crease now in Shea Hope and Roston Chase as Chisoro comes. Comes on with his left arm spin. Oh, has he hit it? Did he hit it? I just thought about it. What about another one? There's so much energy in the field. There's so much going on. Has he nicked this? No, he's hit the inside of his pad. But you've got to hold on to that, Reggie, because you're going to find an outside edge at some stage. Nice, ball's going to be nice and hard as well for Chisora. It's going to bounce. It's the new ball. It's kept a bit low this time, but he's flicked it. Mid wicket for one, and they'll get two. Oohs and ahs, and catch it. It's all happening for Zimbabwe at the moment. They've just found a bit of uh, momentum with that wicket of uh, Christopher Mpofu. It's well played by Roston Chase because there isn't anyone really out there. He's picked up two. <gasps> oh, 
One of the left arm spin bowlers in the world who loves bowling with the new ball is Jadeja from India. He likes the new ball, he gets good bounce. It's gone there again. It's the wrong length, this from uh, Chisoro, and he's wasting that uh, ball. It's gone for four. Yeah, this is really well played by Austin Chase. Now he's going to try and fight back some sort of momentum for the Windies. Really well played. He gets so deep in the crease. He's a tall man, so long levers, and he'll be able to make better contact through the leg side with a bit of a flurry. Seven off seven. Chase. Yeah, there is a mid-wicket deployed there now to cut that shot. And the Yorker is uh, used as well. 170 for four. Such a good shot from the tall right-hander. Look at how deep he gets, but look at how upright he is. And he can trust his hands. And making good contact with that long blade. Manipulate the field, go against the plans. That's what it does in the air for a while, but it goes for four. Man of the moment, Christopher Mpofu. Sent down a, a short, fast delivery from round the wicket that uh, veered into its target with great accuracy. That target was Kyron Powell's throat. And in the action of fending it off, he found Shh, Craig Irvin. Craig Irvin in gully pulled off a tremendous catch. So two, three wickets this morning. Powell, Bishu and Carl Hope. Another failure for Carl Hope. Here goes uh, Mpofu. From a seam point of view, Mpofu knows it. he's pretty much on his own. He's got Solomon Mire, who didn't look 100% fit. So this man is going to have to shoulder the responsibility for the team for bowling seam up. The one thing about Christopher Mpofu that uh, we can talk about his bowling, he's an energetic individual. He's someone that will want to contribute. And you can see in his body language and the way that celebration was when he got that wicket. Oh, has he trapped him this time? Oh, was it too high? Was there an edge? I would have gone up for that if I had a review. I think this is a very close. No more reviews available. They've wasted them. One of them it might have been a shade high. It's gone right back onto his stumps, Shea Hope. Kyle Jarvis uh, was instrumental in the second innings. Getting him out, getting caught on the crease. It's good stuff, this from Mpofu. An appeal. Was there an edge? No, uh spike on ultra edge and uh, ball tracking will probably show that it's going over the top so Kumada Masina was right on this occasion tries to get that full length in again getting a little bit of shape on it here Mpofu Yeah, I, I think that Zimbabwe have uh, figured out something about Shea Hope. Maybe he's just falling over a little bit. That head is not quite balanced, so may, perhaps they have seen a, a chink in the armory. Ah! 
slow delivery that from Mpofu at 114. That's a much reduced pace. Yeah, you can see how he's just run his fingers down the side of the ball and hence, yeah, a little false shot that from Shea Hope this time. All right, five dot balls delivered here from Mpofu. Fastest at 135, that last one at 115. And it's a single to finish, 171 for four. Karen Powell, the last man gone. Bishu was the night watchman. He lasted 52 balls for his 23. And Carl Hope, unfortunately for him, trapped LBW. No doubt about that, even though he reviewed it. He went for one. So good inroads here made by Zimbabwe on day three of this second test. It's a horrible delivery when you've got a new ball in your hands. Best to use the facilities. Alan, I just said that to you a little while ago off uh, air, that I just feel that Graham Creamer has withheld himself from bowling from the airport end and perhaps has just given Tenjai Sussoro too much responsibility before lunch. I think Graham Creamer should be bowling now. That's a freebie. Well, he is bowling from the airport end. He should have been landing it properly. It's a gift, isn't it, to Shea Hope? Nice, JC, nice, buddy. Here you go, JC. I just feel with Christopher Mpofu and the way he's bowling and Graham Creamer with the thought from the Wendy's camp is that he's also a great threat. Just 10 minutes before lunch, give him an opportunity to bowl. Or give himself an opportunity to bowl. He's bowled a majority of his balls from the city end and we've seen a great deal of turn from the airport end. So we're coming up to about eight minutes. There's the ball. Oh man, as a fast bowler. He's kicking the turf. He only come around 80 overs. Yeah, well, the uh, excess pieces, like a bit of loose cartilage, just trimmed. Make sure the ball behaves properly, just like a misbehaving medial meniscus I would be of uh, the opinion maybe leave those little bits on the ball it helps with reverse swing doesn't help in a knee joint <laughs> nice buddy, nice buddy. I agree with you with uh, Grant Creamer new ball gets it to Fizz he has bowled 27 overs though Grant Creamer I'm going to say he's tired with it but uh, would he have been a better choice? 175 for four. <laughs> Blackwood, Dorich, Holder, Roach, and Gabriel. Zimbabwe will be looking to try and pick up two or three of those, whereas the Windies will be looking to make it count. Shea Hope digging in 19 from 51. It's Roston Chase 
who's uh, on strike here. There is a leg gully now for Roston Chase. Stuart Hall is the coach for the for the Windies. All right, leg gully in now. Is it going to be a short one to start from Umpofu? Great on. He's got a leg gully that's Kendaraza, and then there's a man in the deep square of the wicket. For me, I would want perhaps that leg gully to go to a leg slip. There he is, just at the far right of your screen. So they're going with the short ballers at a double bluff to catch him on the back foot. the bowling coach uh, for Zimbabwe. I'd be happy with Christopher Mpofu's uh, reward on this surface. It's quite lively, Makai, in the morning, and he's all about. It's uh, another ploy coming round the wicket now for Mpofu. I like this from Mpofu. 100% effort for his team here. Yeah, perhaps... Uh, Zimbabwe have done their homework on uh, Rustin Chase and him playing the short ball. Good stuff. Four dot balls looking to bowl the short ball, trying to induce that false stroke from Chase. If this is the ploy, why not maybe get someone under the helmet on the leg side? Because this is this is the idea. The short ball is the idea, and you want him to be uncomfortable. So just put someone just on the leg side, just under his eye line. Yeah, it's a good call. Take away the extra cover. He's not gonna get he's not gonna drive it. You know, I can take away that man in extra there. He's coming back over the wicket now. And delivers a very gentle delivery. If I was in the Zimbabwe camp, I'd be getting a masseur ready for Christopher and Porfu at lunchtime. Make him fresh for the afternoon session get some fluids on and really give him short bursts and again I'll say he's just his attitude is really good well bowled what a very good over from Mpofu 87 gone 175 for four Yes, good. And sees a little bit out of breath there, Christopher Mpofu, but uh, a really good reward for the, for the team and for yourself on this surface. So a pat on the back. And in a little while, we'll have uh, some lunch. Those are his spells. He's bowled three excellent spells. Six overs for ten, five overs for seven, four overs, one for three. And the wind is scoring at barely a fraction over two and over throughout this innings. I felt that from here. Just hands on heads and hands in the air. But again, I think maybe sliding down the leg side. Oh. Gosh, that would have made lunch feel good. Oh, stop it, Tendai Chisoro. This is really good. A little bit of a fight back over. I mean, that's unplayable. You'd miss that with the door. Oh, 
Nice, TC. Keep going, buddy. Keep going, buddy. Get on the board yet, T. Keep going, TC. Lovely buddy, lovely buddy. But it's that type of wicket where you get a ball like that. You need to put it behind you straight away and continue the good work. And that's what he's done. He's been able to go back onto the front foot when he's decided to pick the length. He's still not in a negative mindset. So that's good from Shea Hope. Nice, nice, TC. Good, Tendai. This might well be the last ball before lunch here. What a good morning session it's been. And these getting rid of power oh that's hit chakabra in the chest was it a stumping chance was it 88 has gone 176 for four looks like it might be one more over here before lunch even the umpire loves it it is an excellent delivery, an excellent over, a probing over. Spiteful delivery this for Chakabva to negotiate the beats. Oh, well, technically, there's a stumping opportunity, but his foot, does it drag out here? Does it drag? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. What a delivery from Tendai Chisoro. Wow, a really good over. Prima. Oh, we don't mind, Joe. Good, mate. Very good shot, this. That's gone all the way for six. Good grief. He doesn't care if there's a luncheon break or a little interval away from here. He goes down the wicket. Oh, out the middle of the bat. Half a dozen. Take some of that. A really ultra positive shot that was from Rustin Chase. Just gives you an idea of the mindset of Rustin Chase that he's prepared to hit a straight six in the last over before lunch. Gone leg side this time. It's not going to go for four. Yeah, I like what you've said there, Alan. Positive. The positive mindset and approach to playing this last over. That's in the intent that if it's there to score off, I will. Could have probably done a little bit better there. Arkhamwala as they pick up three comfortable runs. That's maybe the mindset that you really need on a surface like this. Three balls to go here before lunch. Shea Hope on strike. Keep going, Joey. Keep going, Joe. Keep going, Joe. Let's follow Joey. Let's follow Joey. Come for lunch here, Joe. <laughs> Another full toss. And uh, Kramer is livid with himself for having delivered a pretty poor over. 188 for four. 
long half volley and it's played really well through the covers by Shea Hope just gives himself some space through the leg side to open up the hips and the hands and he picks up four it was a very expensive over for Graham Creamer that one before lunch 13 runs off it this session 110 runs for three wickets at uh, 2.75 good over rate 40 overs as Bob will be happy they picked up three wickets The Windies trail Zimbabwe by 138. Six wickets remaining in this first innings. Roston Chase, 16 not out, and Shea Hope, 23. Bishu was the first to go this morning, 23. Carl Hope didn't last long. He was trapped LBW for one. And Kyron Powell, tremendously uh, worked out by Chris Mpofu, caught uh, spectacularly by Craig Irvin and Gully. He went for 90. 188 for four, and it's taken 89 overs to get those, those runs. Bowling here. And Porfu, one for 20. One for 82, Creamer. Two for 30 from Raza. He's been exemplary today. And Chisoro, 18 overs, none for 51. It was two and a half hours of entertainment from the Windies and Zimbabwe. It started off with a, a half century for that man, Powell. And also some very attacking shots by the West Indies. They weren't going to be bogged down and they were happy to take on the Zimbabwe bowlers early on. And for Zimbabwe, there were some blemishes. And this was one of them, Brendan Taylor putting one down at that stage of the Devendra Bishu. And then finally, Raza was brought into the attack and saved Zimbabwe. A few more blemishes, and then he continued his good work. This was a really good delivery. Sharp turn. There were opportunities uh, for the Zimbabweans, and they thought that they had uh, Powell on... Uh, numerous occasions they put him down but this was also a review that they lost they thought it was going on for lbw or did they think it was a catch it was a judge to be not out and then christopher mpofu against the run of play decided to test the middle of the pitch and yes really brought the zimbabweans to light and then rustin chase came out and was really positive even with a little bit of loose bowling in occasions they were happy to put it away and we talk about ultra positive this was a really splendid shot down the ground and this was even better showing some great batsmanship 13 off the last over before lunch their best over of the innings scoring at just over two and over summary of this match at lunch on day three Zimbabwe 326, the Windies 188 for four, and uh, Zimbabwe lead by 138 on the first innings. It's lunch, and uh, we'll be back in about 35 minutes' time. What does it mean to be Zimbabwean? To be Zimbabwean, is to carry the mark of leadership. And leadership begins when you embrace your purpose and take responsibility. These times we're living in are evidence that each one of us was born in this generation for a great purpose. A purpose to shape Zimbabwe's future, a responsibility to carry the promise and live in the Zimbabwe we want. Zimbabwe is waiting for a generation of people who understand the meaning of standing up you are the stepping stone, the one with the flame of inspiration, the one with the passion, the one who has what it takes to move Zimbabwe forward. It's time to stand up and do what is right. It's time to rise and do your part. It's beyond a privilege. It's an inheritance, a pledge that everyone has to make. So rise Zimbabwe, Simuka Zimbabwe, Pakama Zimbabwe. It's time to pledge, register and go vote. This live cast has been powered by Zim DITV News, a division of Sly Media Productions, specialists in social media streaming and in-house TV productions. 
This live cast has been powered by Zim DITV News, a division of Sly Media Productions, specialists in social media streaming and in-house TV productions.